Here's a few more examples on how you do factoring with simple trinomials. And again, simple trinomials are where the first term has a 1 as a coefficient. But if you look carefully at these two, they look a little different. Normally, you have an x squared there and an x, or a y squared and a y. But it's, now we see an x to the fourth and an x squared, a y to the fourth and a y squared. And at first, you say, well, I don't know how to do those. But actually, if you do a small little transformation, or what we call in mathematics a substitution, we can actually change into a form that you're more familiar with, which means if you let the square term equal a letter to the first power, like z to the first power, and then x to the fourth equal z squared, because if you square both sides, x squared, you get x to the fourth, z squared, you get z squared, then, um, then you can substitute that back into the equation. So let's do that. Let's rewrite an x to the fourth as z squared plus 11. And instead of x squared, we're going to write z. Now you end up with something that looks a lot more familiar. And that one you can factor. And then later on, we'll substitute back. But just hang in there, and we'll, we'll show you how to do that. So this is now equal to the product of two binary uh, binomials, I should say, not binaries, but binomials. And since we have a z squared here, we want to write a z and a z. I see a negative 80 there. That means uh, I need a positive and a negative, because the only way to get a negative number is to multiply positive and negative numbers. So that's a positive and a negative. And I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get 80. And when I add them together, I get a positive 11. So one is a positive number. The other one is a negative number. And they differ by 11. And when I multiply, I get 80. And if you think about it a little bit, I think 16 and 5 will work. And you'll need a negative 5, because if you add them together, you'll get a positive 11. If you multiply them together, you get a negative 80. So positive 16 and negative 5. All right, but now we're not done yet, because we had a substitution here. We used substitute the variables. Now we want to plug back in the original variables. And since z was equal to x squared right here, we'll substitute back in for that z. So we have x squared plus 16. And instead of that, we write x squared minus 5. Now we look again, and we make sure that we cannot factor anything further, uh, like maybe the difference of squares. But since 5 is not the square of anything, that's about as far as we can go. And that's the answer for this particular problem. All right, now that you've seen how we do that, let's apply the very same technique over here. Again, we're going to substitute, let y square equal z, and then if we square both sides, we get y to the fourth equals z squared, and we'll substitute that back in here. So this becomes z squared plus 5z minus 84. We're now ready to go ahead and factor that. So this is equal to the product of two binomials. Since we have a z squared here, we need a z and a z. The last number here is negative. Again, that means we need one positive and one negative number, because the only way to get a, a negative is by multiplying a positive times a negative. And then when you add them, you get a positive 5. That means the positive number is 5 bigger than the negative number. So how do you get 84? Now, this is a little bit more difficult to do. And sometimes what helps is to find all the factors of 84. So 84 can be divided by 2 to give you 42, which can be divided by 2 to give you 21, which can be divided by 3, which gives you 7. So 84 is really the product of 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. So now we're looking for two numbers. When you multiply, you get 84. For example, I can say 84 can be found by multiplying 21 times 4. But then if I add them together, I will not get 5. For example, I can say, well, I can multiply 14 times. If I multiply 2 times 7, I get 14. And 2 times 3, I get 6. Uh, 6 times 14 is 84. But when I add them together, I will not get a 5. So maybe I can multiply 7 times the product of these, which would, be, which would be 12. 7 times 12 is 84. And there, I notice that the difference between them is 5. So if I have a negative 7, a positive 12, I will get a positive 5. And so there's my answer. I need a negative 7 and a positive 12. And that's the factored form of this 
problem. But we're not done yet because I used z's here and I have to convert back to y's. So instead of z, I'm going to write what z is equal to in terms of y. That's a y squared. So this is equal to y squared plus 12. And this is equal to y squared minus 7. And a quick check to make sure that this is not the difference of squares, which is not. So that's my final form. And that's the factored form of my original problem.